So recently we had Andy here on the IoT show demo how to update disconnected device. Now we're challenging him to do that across more complex networks with layers. This is today on the IoT show. Hi everyone, you're watching the IoT Show. I'm Olivier, your host. Today we will talk about updating IoT devices on an ISA 95 industrial network. Uh, so if you don't know what that is, we'll, we'll have a short explanation, but in a nutshell, it's what's used in the industry for securing networks out there. And for that, we have Andy. Andy, how are you? Hello, glad to be here. Awesome. So Andy, that's the second time you're coming. So you, last time you came and uh, on this episode, uh, you talked about how to update disconnected devices. So you explain how to use a new um, feature that is available uh, for Azure IoT Edge that allows to update devices that are not directly connected to the internet. So that's not what we're going to do today. We're going to do something more complicated. So tell me a bit about yourself first, for those who have not seen that first episode, short introduction, your team, and what are you doing? And then we'll jump into the context of today's episode. OK, great. So uh, I'm a program manager, and I work on um, a product called Deliver Optimization, which is the downloader for much of the content that is downloaded onto the Windows OS. So if you think about any of the update or even Office, uh, all this content comes through 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 this downloader, which is on the client. And then I work on this product, which is a, a module that we built, an IoT Edge module called Microsoft Connected Cache, which is currently in preview. And that serves as a local cache for content or a local CDN, if you will, so that um, you could both save bandwidth and in the case that we're going to talk about today, support um, downloading content for devices that are disconnected from the uh, from from the internet. Nice. So when, when we discussed re recording that episode, um, mm -hmm. we we initially discussed maybe presenting everything at once, and then we went like, no, let's do a first one, which is really about the basics. How do you right. update these devices that are behind a gateway? Right. So we did that last time. So today we're going to talk about a more specific scenario and more realistic scenario which is the context of an industrial network. So tell me more about this context that you had to evolve in and understand in order to develop that new feature for IoT Edge. Yeah, so um, I'm just gonna show something on my, on my screen here. And so, and so this is actually taken from an, um, an, a GitHub project for Azure IoT Edge for I IoT. And if we look in this, in this, diagram here, this is ultimately what we need to support with our product that we built this IoT Edge module, Microsoft Connected Cache. And in this, quite simply, you, you've got this IT proxy that sits at the edge, and then you have these different layers that are, that are separated and that only have visibility into one layer higher. And so in this case, when we get down here to this bottom layer, there's even this proxy that's sitting in here. And so we, we had to build Microsoft Connected Cache, build functionality so that it could support um, content downloads at all these different layers. Okay, so we'll look at how it works exactly. Uh, and actually, let's get into it. Tell me about this demo you're gonna show, okay. lay out the context, and then yeah. let's get into it. Great. So um, back to my screen here. So I'm actually going to show a slightly simplified version of this just for the purposes of this mm -hmm. demonstration today. And so this is a, um, an image that's up on our, on our docs today. And, and it shows how to build um, or, or how to support a, a nested or a layered um, uh, IoT edge um, system here. And so, here, once again, this is, as I said, a simplified picture from what I showed previously, but we have a parent gateway, and then we have a child IoT Edge gateway, and then underneath that child IoT Edge gateway, we even have a, a Leaf IoT Edge device. Okay. And so um, I actually have that set up right here, 
at home and I have it set up. Um, my parent is a physical laptop. It's the same laptop that I used in the previous demonstration that I did. But then for my child IoT Edge Gateway, I actually have a, a, a VM that's running on a laptop that's sitting here beside me. And I have my same trusty Raspberry Pi that is running as my Leaf. And, um, and I'm not gonna show you very much about my parent here. I'm actually gonna more focus on the, on, on the child here. Um, and one of the things here that I wanna show, and I'm gonna go over to, this is my child. I'm gonna show you that this child is disconnected from the internet. I cannot okay. talk to the internet with this guy. This guy, this is my leaf, my Raspberry Pi. He is disconnected from the internet. My, my parent gateway, however, my parent gateway is connected to the internet. I'm, I'm, I am not going to show that, but it, but it is connected. I have okay. Microsoft connected cache deployed to both the child IoT Edge gateway and the parent IoT Edge gateway. And I'm just going to talk a little bit about the settings that I, that I have here. So, um, so here we have my um, child IoT Edge gateway, and we can see here that it is parented. Um, you can see right here, it's parented to my IoT Edge gateway that does have internet connectivity. And, and, and then, this is um, actually here, Andy. This is a featured uh, a feature of IoT Edge itself as a runtime correct. that now supports nested edge. So this notion of hierarchies of IoT Edge devices that's something new that we have in in this product now. Correct, exactly. So I'm just I'm I'm just using this new mm -hmm. this new fantastic feature that supports nesting or supports hierarchies of IoT edge gateways. And so what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just gonna take a quick look at my Microsoft connected cache module here. And I'm gonna look at the environment er environment variables of my deployment. And I can see that those are hidden because of my nifty feature here. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off so we can see these. But, um, but these, but these variables here that I want to show you that are important to this, and all of these variables, by the way, are documented. Um, mm -hmm. Is this um, is a couple of variables here? So we have um, cacheable custom host, upstream host. Now, upstream host. If we go back to this picture here, this refers to in the context of my child IoT Edge gateway. What is my upstream Microsoft connected cache host that I should be pulling content from? Because if you remember, this child ITH gateway does not have internet connectivity. So it needs to proxy its call for content through a, through a parent IoT edge gateway and that MCC running on that. So that's, so that's one. And if there were a proxy, there would there there is also another argument that or variable that is documented where you could specify a proxy upstream as well. Got it. Got it. Makes sense. And then the other um, the other feature that I want to mention here is this cacheable custom host, and it's kind of hard to see here, it's, but there you, you can see it there. Cacheable custom host. We actually specify um, it, with this argument, what are the um, endpoints in the cloud that we want to allow caching for? Because this, this server is not provisioned with every endpoint in the world because for security purposes, you want to make sure that you're not just pulling or that there can't be some process randomly that's pulling content from some endpoint that you do not want it to pull from. This gives you control so that when you're doing package-based update, for example, of your IoT Edge gateway, you're ensuring that those packages are coming from a trusted source. And so um, in this setup here, I have two of these custom hosts that are going to be used because I, uh, I have deployed an update mm -hmm. um, to my um, IoT Show Demo Hub here. And I am I'm gonna update good old curl. It's a very useful um, tool that we all we all know and love and it's really important that we update that. So what I'm gonna do here is I, I'm just using the sample updates that we published up there and, and I just published that sample update there. It's very quick and easy. 
and I'm going to select that update and I'm going to create a deployment. Before I do that, though, and complete the deployment, I'm going to do one more thing on my edge gateway so we can make sure to see what's going on here. Um, and I'm going to shoot, choose my IoT show demo edge child group. I, I created this group. And I have exactly one IoT Edge gateway in it, and it's this guy right here. But you could have as many IoT Edge gateways um, as are supported in there. So you can scale because you can. We're scale. doing that. You know, like there's only three devices that we're tackling, but in real life, actually, you would have hundreds potentially. Exactly. This is this is intended to support a, a factory. There could be hundreds or thousands. Who knows? And I'm gonna, and I have, I'm gonna set this update so that so that it's in the past. Now, two quick things that I'm gonna show here. I'm gonna be running um, the journal control for um, the IoT Edge gateway on the ADU agent so that we can see that moment when that download is triggered. And the other thing that I'm gonna do here is just to show briefly, even though I said I'm not gonna show much for the, um, for the leaf device, I'm going to show this leaf device disconnected, pulling from this IoT Edge gateway. I have some some content that's out there that's hosted on uh, MS Download Update, and you can see it was able to pull that content. So even though I'm not going to show going through the whole update mm -hmm. process, I can still show that in this in this hierarchical in this nested architecture, my child can still pull content through that parent. IoT Edge Gateway of its, which is a child of another IoT Edge Gateway. But that's a mouthful. Now, this. <laughs> you got it right, though. First yep. time. <laughs> yep. And now, um, now that I have my deployment created here, I am going to go ahead, or I have all the settings for my deployment. I'm going to go ahead and create deployment. And then what we should see here is we should see a near instantaneous. And we do, and it was pretty. It was pretty quick. If you if you noticed, things um, flashed by pretty fast. Um, that we actually had that um, had that download of that manifest that came down, and mm -hmm. then DU for IoT Hub, the agent processed that and said, "Oh, well, I actually need to pull these these packages using an apt plugin." that is within our DO client that sits on this. And then it went ahead and pulled those packages through Microsoft Connected Cache. And those and those packages came down. And then if we actually do something here really quick here. So um, quick question before you jump into that, Andy, uh -huh. like maybe stupid question, but um, the package went like came from up there in the cloud, right? Went to the first gateway, then to the second, and then is available for the leave device to download. Is the package staying on both gateways? Like I can imagine a scenario where you have like different trees, right? Will you have the package on all the gateways where there is the leave device behind at the end of the day? Correct. It, it will be cached at at each level. So <laughs> as so. As you said, if if within the factory, if you have different edge gateways that are managing different leaf devices, but those leaf devices are all sharing the same um, content, sharing the same image potentially, yep. then that parent would then be storing that image so that when that child gateway pulls it, it's going to pull it from the parent rather than yep. having to make that round trip. So yep. it, yeah, so that's a great um, realization exactly. that we're actually saving bandwidth. And if you, have, if you have different gateways and different leave devices, then all the images will have to be in there. So you have to think about the allocation. I remember you were describing that first video, the fact that you have a setting for defining the amount of memory that can be used by the, 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 um, the, the memory cache module, right? So Correct. that means that you need to you need to think about your scenario ahead of time. And hey, if I have that many packages need to be stored on that, I would say master or top level gateway, then you mm -hmm. need to think about it in terms of storage, right? Exactly. And that's what this argument here that I'm just uh, showing you here that this storage size, you can set the storage size of the uh, of your cache that's running on your on your edge. And, and that so, triggers another question. And sorry, I'm curious. No, no. Um, go ahead. Another one: Is the module able to be smart to a certain extent? Like, it, it, let's imagine you did cache like a dozen of these packages, mm -hmm. and it's actually like full. 
in terms of memory. And you have a new one that needs to be pulled because your new device that is under. Is it smart enough to remove an old package that is not used anymore or that was here for a long time to replace yeah, the new so, one? Yeah, um, so at its core, we're using um, an open source um, web server called Nginx. And Nginx will will handle all of that intelligence, that, that, that smartness of purging older content when when it needs space and then bringing in new content when um, needed. Okay, awesome, love it. So now that we have completed the, the, the update here, I don't know which, um, which aha moment I, or which great moment I should show first, but um, actually I'll just go here to the proof is in the pudding here. Remember we were trying to install libcurl Yep. And um, package is already installed. It's already there. It's been installed. And actually, nice. I can I can deploy a second update here that will remove it. I, I could show that if you like, or we could uh, save it for the future, or we could have. We can, we can definitely own. save it. For, I think I think we got we got plenty already today. I think that's already yeah. lots for our audience to digest and go try it for themselves. Right. Definitely, definitely. But uh, so. If you had to sum it up, Andy, it was like two key takeaways for our audience. What would they be? So, um, so keys. So, so keys here really are that you can use with device update for IoT Hub. You can use Microsoft Connected Cache to support any of your disconnected, or in this case, to support your ISA ninety five networks, so that you can securely and and easily. Um, support any update scenario that you that you need to, and that it provides that that flexibility for you to do that with the with the different settings that I've shown here. So you can have proxies, you can have different layers, you can have different custom endpoints that you want to cache content from, etc. Love it, awesome, Andy, perfect. Thanks for watching this IoT show today. Uh, if you want to learn more about the uh, the feature that Andy just described, you can go to the following link, aka.ms slash IoT show slash update disconnected devices. So they're going to learn everything about leveraging Andy's team's features and deliverables for your scenarios. Awesome. Thanks, Andy, again. I, I look forward to another episode with you. They're more and more interesting. All right. Thanks for watching the IoT show. See you soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye.